Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying a wonderful Thanksgiving uh, holiday, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday weekend. Um, and I also want to say thank you for your support. Um, my channel is continually doing well; it's growing, and I really appreciate the, not only your support but your feedback on the videos that I post. And uh, I'm going to continue putting out more videos every other day. If there's any specific baseball video, first of all, if you're a baseball fan. This channel is for you, so make sure you click that subscribe button and click the bell next to it so that you not only have access to a couple dozen videos which I put out already, generally team to team by team breakdowns this offseason, MLB for agent predictions, a couple of Houston Astros scandal videos, um, or cheating scandal videos, and one of them was which uh, I discussed what I feel is an appropriate punishment. Um, uh, let's get team by team breakdowns of what teams should do this offseason versus what they're going to do this offseason. I also have a one one of two video, a part one of two, which is my MLB 2020 final standings uh, for each team and division before the winter meetings and all the signings. And then I'm going to do a follow up after the winter meetings and the signings and see which teams made drastic moves. So, um, so if you enjoy videos like that, make sure you click the subscribe button. I have a bunch in the description down below, so hopefully you enjoy them. If you have feedback of your own or any requests, I try to accommodate all requests, so put them in the comments down below. Please click that like button and please click that subscribe button so I can continue to send out more videos. Um, and I'm really happy that you enjoy the content. So with that said, I want to talk about the seven players that I feel uh, should be traded this offseason. Okay? Um, these are the generally traders who can extract the most values. And if, well, first of all, if all of them are traded, it'll change the whole entire landscape of the Major League Baseball, of, of all the teams, but in um, the divisions. But even if a handful of them get traded... I think will be uh, still a significant impact. So let's get to it. Okay, number one, Mookie Betts. Okay, obviously, um, I think he's a, a a good candidate to go to the National League, probably the Dodgers or a team like that, or potentially even. Um, I actually have um, a bold trade proposal to the New York Mets. If you're a Mets fan, I have a specific Mets video uh, team break team breakdown. So make sure you watch that and talk about Mookie Betts in there. But I think he's a good candidate to go to the NL uh, for a number of reasons. One, to get him out of the AL. Um, but um, also to clear, Boston was looking to clear payroll, and now that J.D. Martinez opted back into his contract. So he's going to be expensive. He only has one year of control left, but he is a top five player in baseball, so he's still going to get a robust package in return, okay, no matter what, okay? Um, you know, with the one year, with like I said, one year of control left, but he's a top five player. I do think, you know, he's, a, he's like I said, he's a good candidate to go to the Mets or the Dodgers or potentially another team. Um I actually have a, a trade proposal for him to go to the Cardinals, who I think is uh, the really good fit for him as well. So take a look at my St. Louis Cardinals breakdown as well if you want to see a trade proposal there. Okay, so he's number one. Number two, Francisco Lindor. He's got a couple years of control, I think two years of control. He's also young. He's 25 or 26. Another game-changer of a franchise-altering player. Again, Cleveland needs to clear payroll. They're probably looking to attach somebody like Chloe, Chloe Kluber. Uh, Corey Kluber with him, because so it'll be a, a massive trade uh, if possible. But if not, it'll still be a blockbuster. You know, with the two years of control, they will get a huge return, okay? Um, and they'll be able to address multiple positions, not only in the majors, but restock some of the farm, like they just like they'll be able to do with Mookie Betts as well. But I think a little bit more so with Lindor, because he's got an extra year of team control and he's younger. I think a year or two younger than Betts. Um, but he, again, a good candidate for the Dodgers, good candidate for the Yankees, a good candidate for several other teams who are in need of a, uh, a, a stud shortstop, you know, slash leadoff hitter, okay? He can really revolutionize about it, a lineup and an infield, okay? Um, and it gives you the flexibility to move people around, a second baseman around, or shortstop to third, or shortstop to second, and move things around, or a third baseman over to first. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Number three, Chris Bryant, okay? From the Cubs. The Cubs are you know, at the verge. I mean, their championship window is kind of, I think, behind them. You know, they've gotten their championship, but Chris Bryant's going to be in, in, in two years. He's going to be approaching free agency as well. He's going to cost a boatload of money, and now is the time for them to take advantage of it and trade him if they can to a team, you know, where they can get a huge return. And they will get a huge return for him, no matter what. Okay. And they'll be able to address multiple positions with a trade, whether it be start restocking some of the minors and getting a position, maybe getting a catcher or, or another third base prospect or an outfield or something like that. They'll be able to address multiple positions by trading this one guy. So, um, so yeah, I think he's a good candidate to be traded or should be traded. Um, number four, Matthew Boyd, Detroit Tigers ace. Now, his stats are deceiving because you know he's got close to a four ERA, but there were a lot of games where his bullpen really didn't come through to him, which kind of helped 
jack up his numbers a little bit, but this guy's a perfect candidate for a move to the American League to the National League. You know, and that said, you know, one of the one of the stats that stood out to me this year is hundred about 180 innings pitch, he had 235 strikeouts. So he is a strikeout pitcher. He's a lefty. Plus, I think he's got three years of control left. He's young, and he's got control, and he's affordable. So he's a prime candidate for a uh, switch, uh, partic particularly to the National League. I think he's a great candidate to go to the NL, and you'll get a huge return for him. So um, could you imagine you know, him being traded to the Padres and then the Padres signing Garrett Cole? I mean... Or, you know, Francisco Lindor being traded to the Dodgers and then the Dodgers signing Anthony Rendon and moving Justin Turner over to first base. Like, it did the, changed the whole game. Whole game. Uh, and I do think the Dodgers are at the point where they need to make a very, very aggressive move or two. And they can make a significant signing like Rendon and trade for him, Lindor, and still be in good shape with a lot of money left to make a couple more signings or save money for a huge trade at the deadline. They're still in great shape. Uh, Friedman's done a heck of a job. Kind of unloading big contracts and putting them in a good position to take to take big moves, and they need to be. They've come so close so many times. They need to make a move like this with a Lindor and bring in somebody like Rendon um, or something like that. Um, maybe even a Dylan Batances for the bullpen. Kind of be crazy, but as, as much as a Yankee fan, I am a Yankee fan. I would hate to see that happen. But is it the Dodgers? I mean, it's time for them to really take the next step. So, boy, uh, number five, another Cub, Kyle Schwarber. I think he's another candidate. He's got a couple years left. He can also get a huge package, and I think he'd be a perfect candidate for a move to the AL for a team that might you know, be able to utilize him as an outfielder slash first baseman slash DH. Um, he'd be a good fit for a lot of teams. And um, White Sox, Yankees, it could be Red Sox. I mean, it could, it could be a lot of teams. Um, but I think even the Oakland A's. I mean, like, but I don't think they'd be able to afford to... To give him a big contract later on, which is why I think he's going to probably wind up going to a team that's got that spends, that spends. Um, and again, lefty hitter, good contact hitter. You know he's got the numbers to back it up, and I think he'd be a perfect candidate. Um, and given him the availability to play DH or even first base, you know, kind of lower the stress on his body in the outfield, might be able to keep him healthy a little bit longer. So um, I think he's a good fit for a move to the, to the American League. Um, number six. Whit Merrifield. This guy, so this is a stud second baseman. One of the top second basemen in baseball, okay? He's in Kansas City. They're not going to be contending anytime soon. So person, my personal opinion, they're in a perfect position to trade him and potentially Danny Duffy too. Merrifield is, is, is a unique one because he not only is a uh, top performing second baseman, but he has four years of control left at a very affordable contract, which makes him supremely valuable. To extract a huge return in the trade, okay. Um, like I said, four years left. Stud second baseman on a very affordable contract. And he's not on this hundred hundred million dollar deal or anything like a Jose Altuve, um, but he could be somebody you know to trade to. You know, I, I actually ha I have him in a. Actually, I won't tell you. Watch my Kansas City Royals video and I watch my Oakland A's video as well because uh, I have bold trade proposals for both teams. Um, but so he'd be a prime candidate. So I would keep an eye out for him. I think he should be traded. And last but not least, Noah Syndergaard, Thor, Mets number two. I think he's a great candidate. I think he's got two years left. He's another candidate for a large return. Um, and he's not Jacob DeGrom's level or Verlander's level, but he's somebody who can fit right into a rotation and be a number two or a number three and really complement the number one. Um, and uh, he's a very talented pitcher. And he'd be a perfect candidate for a team that's a pitching hungry, hungry team. Who wants to add a starter, especially the National League, where you can capitalize on pitching to pitchers as well. So, just a thought. Uh, so, anyway, here are my seven players, my seven major trade candidates. Let me know what you think. Drop a comment down below, and um, you know, give me some insight of your own. Give me some suggestions of your own. And like I said, if you're a baseball fan, please click the subscribe button and click the like button and click the bell next to it so you can enjoy uh, more videos. And I'm posting them every other day. So. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're having a great Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Talk to you next time.